Welcome back to Beg, Borrow, Steal, and in today's episode, we're going to be kicking off our first campaign in the Spanish top flight, having got promoted all the way up from the fourth without spending any money on transfers. We have commemorated our promotion to the top division by purchasing a new villa in the Barcelona Hills so we can live in a little bit of luxury, but the celebratory mood has not extended to the chat. The whistle hadn't even blown for our playoff final victory to seal promotion to the top flight. Then the chat were doom-mongering, relegated by Christmas, the lowest points total a Liga has ever seen. We haven't even kicked a ball yet, and you lot are already writing us off. If we're relying on me to be the optimistic one, then we really are in trouble. But today, we kick things off in probably our best chance of getting a win of any of the games we could have faced. <laughs> But before we show you the upgrades we've made and the transfers that we've brought into the club, it's Patreon update time again and another one of you lovely viewers has used the link in the video description down below to head over to the Patreon page and pledge your support. This time we're welcoming Richard Gibbon into the Patreon club. We're going to try and thank Richard for their generosity by getting a win in an opening day game today against another newly promoted side. So the fixture list has arguably given us a winnable game on the opening day of the season. We're at home against Sporting Gijon, another side that were promoted from the second tier last season. Granted, they did finish above us in the league, but we were ahead of them going into the last game of the season before we got hey, Carter Haynard by the team that were in the relegation zone. But that's all water under the bridge now. We've won the playoffs, we're in the top flight, and we've got a game that on paper... I think gives us a chance today, not that you would know that, but the pre-season odds that we've been awarded. 1,000 to 1 shots to win the title. You'll see Sporting Gijon down there at 300 to 1. Worryingly, neither Real Madrid or Barcelona are favourites for the title this season. That honour goes to Valencia, who've had a tycoon takeover. have been throwing a bit of cash around, so there are more than two big clubs in the Liga for us to face this season. This afternoon... We get it underway against Sporting Gijon. So I say we're starting with a home game. We're not really. We're having to play away from our own ground for another year because our stadium was not big enough to meet La Liga requirements. But the board have responded by deciding to build a new one. They're going to invest more than £20 million in the building of Europa Stadium. Not going to be ready for a couple of years. We've had to take out an £18 million bank loan to fund it. But it does mean that the board are eager to improve the infrastructure. We've also managed to build some new facilities at the club as well. We've upgraded our training facilities and our youth facilities. That only gets our training facilities back to the level they were at when we took over and they were in the fourth division. Because without investment over the last few seasons, they had degraded somewhat. But it means that we do have some really decent finances now even with that £18 million loan that we've taken out, there's nearly £16 million in the bank. We've still got some in the transfer budget that they won't allow us to move over to the wage budget. After our summer transfer dealings, we're a little bit over the wage budget, but compared to the other clubs in this division, what we're spending per week is a drop in the proverbial ocean. Let's show you what we've done in the summer. I think we've strengthened, although... Given the standard that some of these players were playing at last season, the comment section could be right. We could be in trouble. So we've got several elephants to get out of the room first of all. Have a look at the team in front of you. You'll see we're starting with the same goalkeeper. Having made signing a keeper my number one summer transfer priority, I've completely failed in that mission. The scouts found a few. They were no better than Barossi. Most of them were worse. So we're going into the season with a player that I was very critical of last season in the league below. Attribute-wise, he's not the worst. Performance-wise, goodness, does he chuck in some mistakes, but I haven't bought in a keeper as yet, which means our backup will continue to be academy product. Gerard Lopez, imagine this coming into goal against Barcelona or Real Madrid. We would be in all kinds of trouble. The transfer window's not closed yet, so the hope is that we will still be able to bring in a first-choice keeper before the window slams shut. We will keep you updated. A little bit further forward, we've managed to bring in last season's star player, Oluwasagun Ikechukwu, 
back on loan from Fulham. I think Olu is our best player physically. Absolutely superb. A decent passing, tackling, teamwork as well, determination. Maybe not as a libero this season. I'm thinking more of a ball-playing defender. But vital to get Olu in for another campaign. He'll be playing alongside some old friends like Corey and Darbus signed a new contract. Jake O'Brien is still in the squad. But we've bolstered the numbers in defence as well. Maybe not improved the quality. But we've given ourselves some more options. This is probably the best of them. Sumaila Koulibaly. Physically, average. Technically, lacking. Although the tackling is 15 and the positioning is 16. The worry is that Old Tamila has never really played any football of note. He's potted around with Dortmund's B team in the German third tier, pretty much as high a level as he has managed to play at. It's going to be a huge jump up to La Liga, but jumps like that are the norm for some of the signings that we have made. Let's go a little bit further forward on the pitch. We had two on loan left wing backs last season, none of which were any good. So we've gone out and signed two new ones. It was a problem position for us. We've only just brought these two players in. The first to come through the door was Durgam Ishmael, who is 32 years old, an Iraqi international. As the arrows show, he's not going to improve. If anything, he's going to deteriorate. He's a solid citizen and has played football at a reasonable level recently, having been a bit part player for San Etienne in Ligue 1. But at the time... Old Durgan was the best left back that we could find, but just a week later, I think we might have signed an even better one, but one that's suspended for today's game. This is Argentinian Gonzalo Escobar, who suspended for some infraction they incurred five seasons ago when they were last playing in Spain. 29 years old, another experienced player, slightly quicker this time, good work rate, decent crossing and dribbling. I know we're not blowing anybody away with the quality of these signings. But for us, these are pretty decent. And Gonzalo has been playing second division football in Germany last season. And five years ago, they were in La Liga 2 playing for Ibiza. So we'd say that there's some pedigree there. Maybe not an awful lot in terms of other defenders that we've brought in. We've brought in a backup player as well. Dinel Simu who is quick, which is the only reason I've brought him in, really, just to give us a pacey option at centre-back or some cover at right-back. When I show you the standard of football we've been playing here, we might be a little alarmed. They've not played a game for five years when they were at Colchester in League Two, and that's all the football they've played. So it would be a baptism for young Dinell if he was to get a game. But we've got other players like that who have not played a lot of football recently. Such as the first signing we made in the window, which was to bring in Dutchman Stin Spearings, 30 years old, another veteran. We brought in some younger players as well. We'll show you those in a moment. When we made Steen our first signing, I thought we were going to have a great window. I thought if this is the quality of player we're picking up at the first time of asking, we must find some other gems during the window. I'm not sure that's particularly true. Old Stin is one of the best of them, but he has played at this level for the last few years. Granted, we're making occasional sub-appearances for Rayo Vallecano, but they did at least sign him. They must have thought at some point he was capable of playing La Liga football, and he's going to be in the midfield for us today, alongside another new signing, and one that I think is pretty decent. This is 24-year-old Tommaso Milanese, ironically came from Roma rather than Milan, I think he has got some pretty decent elements to his game. Likes to be a ball-winning midfielder. We're going to ask him to be a box-to-box -box midfielder. The only drawback is, well, he's not played an awful lot of football, although we made 13 sub-appearances for Roma last year, as well as making one start in Serie A. So there must be some talent in there somewhere. And if Tommaso doesn't get the job done, We've brought in another decent central midfield option as well in the form of Diego Rosa, who's been released by Man City, I think. We'll check in a moment. But again, he's a pretty decent all-round option. And at 23 years old, has got plenty of football ahead of them. They were on loan at Middlesbrough in the Championship last year and played pretty reasonably. So if they can play that well in the English second tier, maybe in a relegation dogfight in the Spanish top flight, they might not be the worst player in the world and they've been signed by Man City for £5.5 million when they were a teen. 
So again, there must be some kind of potential there that we might be able to work with. Elsewhere in the midfield, we've still got some of our favourites, like down here, we've still got Mickey, we've still got Pacheco, we've still got Javi Alonso, although we've loaned them out. We've even got Simone Muratori still knocking around the club. Can't get rid of this guy. Been trying for two years. He's out on loan for another campaign. And yes, I will admit it, in the midfield, I have given another one-year deal to Lander. I wasn't ready to say goodbye to Lander. Is he anywhere near La Liga standards? No, he is absolutely not. But he can still bang in a corner better than any player we've got on the roster. And I just like having a player with us who's come up the leagues. He's been in every tier with us. And I like the idea of him running around at the new Camp and making a late sub appearance. Look at these glory days. You can't just toss 21 assists out on the street as if it meant nothing to you, even though the comments section were telling me that his time was up. He's still only 29 years old. You need a guy like Lander around the place. But further forward on the pitch, we do have a little bit of youth. Obviously, this is a big season for Paco Gill. Paco had a great campaign last season. His first with us since being released by Numanthia. 10 assists, 9 goals, including in some crucial games. Paco gets a start today, although he might not have, if probably our star signing of the summer had been available. Jordi Ambula has joined us on a free transfer, having been released by Tottenham. Now, granted, he's not played in the last two years for Tottenham, but at least he got to park in their car park. He has most recently been out on loan to Osasuna, although that was two years ago. And that was in this division, and he played 22 games. A lot of them were off the bench. But Mbula looks like another player with some good pedigree. Started out at Barcelona, has been at Monaco, played some games for Mallorca as well. Could be a decent player for us, but I think the player who I could be the most excited about is that we've signed another Paco Gill, this time to play over on the other side. This is Marcos Cordoba, who I think could be a bit of a player. Picked him up on a free, could be worth as much as £9 million. Physically, he is an absolute master. Technically, the flair, the off the ball, the determination, the anticipation, all look great. Maybe not the best crosser in the world to be a winger, but certainly decent dribbling and finishing to be an inverted winger or inside forward. The vision could be a little bit higher, I grant you. The young Marcos is only 18 years old. Athletic Bilbao decided that he clearly wasn't cut out for their level, but we have snaffled him up and is pretty pleased to do so. And that's not the only strengthening we've done in forward positions to give us another option, either as a wide player or as a striker. We've also bought in Femi Aziz, a 25-year-old Nigerian who's come via England. And wait until you see the grounding that this boy has had in the game. He's been playing for Reading in the Championship. But he started out life at Northwood before making it onto Wealdstone. Has even had a loan spell out at Hanwell. And I always say, if you can impress in the Isthmian Division 1 South Central with three goals in three appearances then trotting out at the new Camp is going to be second nature to you. So we've brought in a lot of players this summer. I think we've improved the side. I think players like Cordoba are going to be great stars for the future. I think players like Milanese and Spearings are pretty decent signings for the here and now. Definite improvements on what we've got. We would have liked a goalkeeper. The hunt goes on, but we are a significantly stronger squad than we were last year. Are we strong enough to survive relegation against a division with some very good sides in it? I'm not entirely sure. How about we get something going down in the comments section? Let us know down there where you think we will finish this season and more importantly, how many points do you think we will amass? Will we break the 30-point barrier even though we come bottom? Will we scrape and avoid relegation and get 40 points? Will we surprise the footballing world and finish mid-table with 50 points? Let us know your predictions down in the comments below when we get to the end of the season. If we make it that far without being sacked, we'll see who the winner is. But we're going to try and start it off with three points today against a team that was in the same division as us last season. Let's get out there and take on Sporting Gijon. Oh. 
Okay, here we go then. La Liga football is getting underway. We've got five debutants in the starting 11 today. Another thing you can throw in the comment section is which of our summer signings do you think is the best bit of business, if at all? Or do you think we've signed a complete bunch of duffers that are going to end in relegation? I have to be honest, I'm a natural pessimist and I am not as downtrodden as the comment section seem to be. I think there's some winnable games in this division. We're going to struggle against Barca. Real Madrid, Atletico, and I think there's other teams that don't seem that great, to be honest. That if we can pick up points against those around us, you never know, we might make a fist of surviving. I'm not saying that we're going to do it, and I don't think we're going to be bottomed by Christmas and already relegated. Those could be famous last words. We'll maybe make some judgments after we played five or six games or so. But we're into the highlights. We're in the second minute. We got a ball across, and Rossi has had a good header that was our new Iraqi fullback that I think delivered into the box. And we've made a positive start. If we could get three points today, that would be a tonic. As you look down the league, sides like Cadiz seem beatable. Almeria, Osasuna, Levanta, Granada. These all seem teams that we'd have a chance at. I'm not saying we would beat them, but I think we could give them a game. So I am not as depressed as others in the comments might be. But if we lose 4-0 today... That could all change pretty rapidly, and Gihon are in. They've got a shot away. Barossi, of course, has spilt it. Others might say he's parried it well. I'm going to say that was a routine save that he's tipped into a dangerous area and given away a throw-in, and here they come at us again. They've got the ball down our left. we managed to get it away. Spearing heads the ball clear. Have we got a player quick enough to get onto it? We don't. The ball's coming straight back to us. We've got 15 minutes to go until half-time. We've won it back. Rossi doing some sterling work. Here's the youngster, 18-year-old Cordoba. I think could be an excellent player. Had a good pre-season. Gets a ball into Rossi. Rossi's had his second header of the game. He's hit the bar with that one, I think. Just clipped it and gone over. I'm going to say we've made a decent start to the game. 35 minutes would be great to score before half-time. But I'm not disappointed with how things have gone so far. Six shots, two on target as we approach the half-time whistle. And I'm going to declare that a reasonable first-half performance. We've got to go in there, give them a rousing team talk, come back out and try and snag a winner to get our La Liga campaign off to the best start possible. OK, we are back underway for the second half. Paco's putting in probably the worst of our performances. Down on a 6.5 over there on the right wing. I'm not playing Paco as a winger as he gives a pass 10 yards in front of Rosanas. Trying to play him as an inverted winger, even though he's right-footed, to try and open up the right flank for our fullback. Maybe that's not suiting him very well as Ika Chukwu has a header that goes over the bar. We're creating the occasional chance. We haven't scored a goal yet. Now Gilly has a go. Their keeper is wise to it. Tips it round the post and we're on to the corners. We've had a good first 15 minutes to this half and now we've got a corner. We've not been able to get on the end of it. But here is Stin Spearings. Picked up a booking. Can't get across into the box. I think on 60 minutes it might be time to make a change. We'll let this Eight shots, three on target. Maybe it's time for a shout as well. Let's demand a little bit more. See if that elicits any kind of response. Couple of shifts in the body language. Not a lot. And we're getting towards that 75 minute mark now. We're going to pause it. And I think we are going to make a change. Young Paco has improved to a 6.6. It's not really enough for me. So we're going to go with Femi Aziz. And Femi's going to come on and be, I think, an inverted winger. Running at the back line. Cordoba is not doing very well either. Jordi Mambula is carrying a little bit of a knock. Tight hamstring, one to two days. I'm going to risk it and say that Mbula has got 15 minutes in him. Watch him limp off after three. We are now back into the highlights. 14 minutes to go. Throw into Sporting Gihon. We have had the lion's share of the game. I'm fearful that we could concede a late goal to them. We've got Milanese. He sent a ball through. Aziz, Rossi. Rossi has had three half chances, I would say. They've not been great chances, but I would have expected him to put one of those half chances away. But we're in again. Here's the subs combining. Aziz is in now. 
He's cutting in. He's not on his left foot. He's taking it on his right. But now we're on 83, 84, 85 minutes. It looks like this one could be petering out into a nil-nil. Or have we spoken too soon? Gihon have got the ball. They're in our half. We've got two minutes plus stoppage time to go. We need to win it back in counter. We're not winning it. We are. Now it's Mbula. He's got it to Rossi. He's got space out on the right. Diego Rosa. Here is Aziz. He's got a little bit of pace. He's taken his man on on the outside. He's all left foot, but he's got it over. Jordi Mbula. I'm not bored him on to win far post headers. But that's what we served up to him. We've got one more chance, though. We've ticked over 90 minutes. Here's Mbula. We've got the ball in the box again. Aziz can't win it. And Gihon are on the counter. They've slowed the play down a little bit, but they are manoeuvring around us. We've won it back, though. We've been pretty tigerish in these tackles. Can't say I'm disappointed with that this afternoon. We get the ball forward again. Rose has been linking things up pretty well. And Bool has been involved since he came on. Have we got a goal in us late? Milanese. Here's Jordi and Bula. The Iraqi left back Ishmael's in now. It's Rossi. We need to get the ball into a dangerous area. We've done it. It's Aziz. I'm looking for an offside flag. The ref is running forward. He could have gone a little bit late. Let's check this out. Aziz is running back. We're waiting for the VAR review. I think they've given it. They've gone straight to the they've gone straight to the the replay of the goalies. Oh, they've not shown us the little lines, but I think he's darted past his man. And he has tickled a little effort past the keeper. And we are over the allotted injury time. We're just waiting for the ref's whistle. We've won the ball back again. Milanese seems to have been involved a bit today. I tell you what, I've seen a lot of Mbula since he came on the pitch as well. Some encouraging signs from the new boys. Milanese back to Korean Darba. Here's Ikachukwu playing it around pretty composed. We've worked another little opening. Aziz can't quite get onto Rossi's ball. We're at five minutes of added on time now. Still, the referee's playing on. That should be mopped up by Ishmael. It is. We get the ball away with Ikachuk. Well, surely this is just the longest full-time highlight in the world, isn't it? Kula Bali's up and wins a header. Just run it into the corner now. The ref has finally put us out of our misery. And we have got three La Liga points on the board. And on top of that, we got some pretty decent performances. The players we took off didn't cover themselves in glory, but we've looked pretty good otherwise. That is a decent, decent little performance. XG of 1.53, 18 shots, 8 on target. Granted, we're playing against a team who were in our division last season when we were promoted. But we've got our first three points. So here's your job for the comment section then. How do you rate our summer transfer business? Who do you think is the best player that we've bought in? And more importantly, where are we going to finish this season? And how many points will we be on? We're going to go and play a few more games offline. We're going to come back maybe after seven or eight games to see if we are deep in the mud or whether we are actually making a decent fist of being a top flight side in Begbarra Steel.